Yo people, welcome back to the YouTube channel. You already know what time it is. It's time for another video. It's breaking news. It's awful news. It's devastating news. Um, it's raining down on me a little bit. It's kind of stopped now spitting and it's raining down on Chelsea. Um, this is this is probably one of the worst bits of news we could get, especially at this point in the season. Um, it's not even started yet. Pre-season is yet to even really kick off in America. And Wesley Fofana um, has got an ACL, he's done his ACL, he's got an injury, massive long-term injury, he's going to be out for the season, most likely, um, and this is a player that continues to have to keep coming back from these injuries, and you wonder, you know, if he's going to really be able to return to his level, such a top, top potential centre-back, if you remember his first season at Leicester when he first came to England at, as a teenager, like I said in, in the last video, borderline team of the year, um, you know, kind of performances he was putting in. Um, you, you look at his FA Cup final performance against us when we lost to Leicester 1-0, um, you know, at Wembley. This guy has all the potential, all of the makings to be a top, top centre-back, but he just can't, he can't get over these knee injuries. And obviously he had a um, fibula fracture as well. That was the, the injury that kept him out for the longest, but loads of knee injuries before that and after that. Um, 19, 20, two knee injuries. 2021 20, season, two knee injuries. 2020, 20, 22, 23, two knee injuries. And now ACL injury here. So this is a player that has to continue to keep rising um, and, and responding to these heartbreaking, devastating injuries. And listen, I know a lot of people now are, are, are frustrated. The damage is done for him. Um, but also, obviously, the fact that we did pay 80 million. Um, we haven't really been able to see... Um, the return in terms of performances because he's not been as available as we want. That was the concern when we signed him. You know, that was the only concern when we signed him. And I remember saying it when we signed him. Everything else ticks the boxes. Great penalty box defender. He looks athletic. He's quick. He's quick across the ground. Great tackler. Aerily dominant. He ticks, he ticks all the boxes. And even when you've seen glimpses this season when he's, play, when he's been playing for Chelsea, you can see the, the potential in him. But the only issue and the only question mark and the only query and the only concern was his knee injury history. And like I just said, basically averaging two knee injuries per year, per season. And, you know, for him, you know, it must be devastating. I know he's come off social media. If you if you look on his social media, I think he de deactivated some of his accounts. I think it's either down to maybe football reasons or maybe even personal uh, family reasons. But you can imagine how devastated and heartbroken the player is. Just think about it. Get into the mental psyche. Take away the, the, the wages and the earnings and the... The long-term contract, a lot of people are saying, you know, he's bagged it. Um, but listen, these guys were born to kick ball. These guys were born to play football. They were born to train, to play matches, to be competitive, to win trophies, to, to, to compete for medals, to go to the Euros next next uh, summer for France. That's now in jeopardy. So no amount of money can can uh, replace that feeling of, of not being able to, you know, prove yourself at the highest level and perform especially for someone that's trained for that for their whole life. So you have to feel sympathetic and sorry for Wesley Fofana. And, and, you know, for me, people are talking about, you know, out of frustration, selling him, it's ludicrous. We have to support him, first of all, because, you know, it's not his fault he keeps getting injured. This is just maybe genetics. I don't know. It's, it's unfortunate. Maybe that, that one knee injury has just spiralled into um, a sea of, of injuries now, a conveyor belt of injuries. Um, but... It's, it's illogical to even think that he's going to be going on the market. Listen, this guy is injured for the next um, season. So, he, you know, nobody's going to be coming in for him. And, and, and we're not going to get anywhere near what we paid um, in terms of a return on, on the 80 million. We have to invest. We have to support him. We have to back him to get back and to recover once again and to come back from this and perform. But this leaves us in an awful, awful, awful position. Because, listen, our priorities were far from centre-back in this window, for me at least. You know, we have goalkeeper situation that I continue to talk about. We have centre midfield um, situation that we all know. We have forward as striker. You know, people have their concerns over the, the, the lack of proven quality up there. We, we definitely didn't need to be talking about centre-backs. You know, full-backs is sorted. We didn't need to be talking about centre-backs. We've been, we, we, we signed two centre-backs last summer. One of them, which has been sold now to Saudi and Koulibaly. Obviously, the high wages and the lack of maybe adaptation and obviously unsettled due to the, the things out of his fact out of his you know out of his control uh, which i which i felt would unsettle him because he is someone that you know has been at napoli his whole career and wanted to settle and wanted to be calm and composed it wasn't a player that 
that done well under the conditions of, of chaos and frenzy. Um, and that's exactly what we gave him. So I think that put, played a part in some of his performances. But now you look at what we're left with, right? Thiago Silva at the end of his career. Um, Baddy Ashil, currently out injured, not on the US um, preseason tour currently. Uh, Levi Colwell and uh, Trevor Chalaba. Now, I'm not comfortable now I'm very uncomfortable. Uh, it's uncomfortable conversations, but now I'm very uncomfortable. You know, a, a defender can get injured, right, during the season, a couple of weeks, maybe even a month. But for someone to be out for the whole season, that changes the whole landscape and the whole picture of our centre-back options next season and, and, our, and our choices. Now, I've already been saying in the last video, and I stand by it, we should be keeping Trevor Chalabar. And if anything, this just, again, makes that even more clear. But now I'm looking at the situation in Chelsea are as well, according to Fabrizio Romano. And, and of course, Pochettino will be having a massive say in what he feels he needs. But maybe we do need to be going and looking at another centre-back, a right-sided centre-back. And, and kind of treat Chalabar as your emergency centre-back, but also potential DM cover um, for whoever we bring in. If it is Caicedo, you know, we may not get two midfielders. We might be going down a road, you know, where we don't make another midfield addition after Caicedo. And we you kind of use... Potentially Gallagher and, and Trevor Chalobah as your experienced kind of deputies for defensive midfield um, and, 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 you know, box-to-box -box midfield duties, as well as the young players. Obviously, the, you know, bids can change that. If a big bid comes in for Trevor, maybe eyebrows will raise. Um, if a big, massive bid comes in for Gallagher, I'm sure eyebrows will raise. But we're, we're in a very, um, very sticky situation where we now potentially need to recruit a right-side centre-back. People will be looking for names. For me... Uh, one that springs to mind. I haven't gone through the whole of Europe and started to compile a list. This is all just coming fresh um, off the news that obviously Fafana's out. But one one person that I've always been quite impressed with um, is Anderson at Crystal Palace. Plays fantastic, fantastic style of play, I think, for a, for a top team in terms of his ball playing ability is, is brilliant. Brilliant long-range passer, p plays through the lines. Um, and, and a more impressive passer than, than obviously Gurhi next to him, who, who had a great first season at Palace and then second season kind of tailed off a little bit. But Anderson stood out massively um, alongside him as a player that was brilliant on the ball, very composed, very calm, gave me shades of Christiansen, obviously both Scandinavian. So, um, listen, that might not be a good enough player for, for some of you. I don't know. Listen, you let me know what you think in the comments as to who we should be going for at right side centre-back and what kind of kind of resources should we be put into this you know if, if Fafana is going to be out for this long which he is we don't know how he's going to come back from this do we need another marquee top top level centre-back to go alongside one of the left-sided left-footers in Badia Shil and Colwell I would not you know have any any uh, qualms or, or or questions if, if that's something that you felt like we needed um, is, is a top level centre-back to go alongside one of those two younger um, centre-backs who's really out there you know Kim Min Jae uh, obviously, you know, has gone to Bayern Munich. He could have been a brilliant option as well. I think he would have been a great option. Um, but obviously, probably preferences play Champions League football. We put ourselves in a position where those kind of names are, are difficult, especially with battling other clubs. But that would have been a great option. Um, but he's gone to Bayern Munich. We have to we have to take a look at the market. Like, who is out there? Um, who is attainable? And who can we bring in? So this is a big issue. Um, it's devastating news. I'm really, really gutted for Fafana because I do think, like I said, my only questions, my only worries, my only concerns were his injury record upon us signing him. And I've been very, very clear and big on that. Even with Madaweke, uh, when we signed him, I was speaking, about, speaking on it. Because we've just had so many injury-prone players recently. You know, you look at Ziyech, susceptible. You look at Pulisic, susceptible. You look at Rhys James, you look at Chilwell. Um, we've got a lot of guys, Kante. We've got a lot of, we had a lot of guys that were towing the line between, um, you know, being available, being unavailable, picking up little niggles before matches even kicked off. If you remember Pulisic at Burnley, um, little strains, little niggles here and there. Reese is ill, can't get on the plane. We've got a lot of issues here. We need we need availability. Sometimes it's not, you know, it's not something we can we can really assess in the market. It, it's, sometimes it's unfortunate. It just lands at our doorstep because maybe the injury happens on our watch. But Fafana had a long list of injuries um, with his knee before we signed him. So it does feel like a little bit of a... Um, a, a situation that maybe we could have avoided but listen guys you let me know what you think in the comments down below i'm assuming everybody wants a center back i'm certainly of of the opinion that we need to sign a center back and i'd like i said i'd keep trevor and i'd keep him as as dm depth but also center back depth as well and competition but i, I 
I can't sit here and say to you that with Silver at the age he's at where you really should be sitting up in the stands with the family that we should not be looking at a centre-back now. Uh, we'll see what Poch thinks. Give me some names. I've mentioned Anderson. Um, I'll be thinking of more. I'll probably make a video, a separate video on centre-back, right-sided centre-back options. Um, it looks like it's confirmed that we're going to be moving with a 4-2-3-1. That was reported today as well. And Cuckoo is the, the 10, the double pivot just behind. Um, and obviously the striker pressing from the front. Two wingers, overlapping fullbacks. That seems to be the gist of what Pochettino is going to be working on in training and what the team is going to be preparing to do. Um, and there's no real updates on, on, on other transfer matters at the moment. I'm still waiting for breaking news on, on, on serious shit now. But yeah, guys, it's, it's devastating. It's, it's, it's peak. But listen... It's happened in the transfer window, so we have an opportunity to, to potentially adjust and adapt. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Let me know what options you're thinking of at right side centre back. We'll get a video on right side centre back options to you probably tomorrow. Um, and we're going to go through a list and we're going we're gonna to see what the best options are. Until next time, big up your damn selves in a bit, people. Peace.